Saluki Radio gets ready for the weekend travel to Wichita State. Coach Watson, back to Wichita. You know this road trip a little bit. Nice to have it back on the schedule, isn't it? Wow. Have we had some battles in Wichita over the years? Uh, 1988 89 season, they were picked hands down favorite to win the Missouri Valley. Creighton was picked seventh, Southern was picked somewhere mid to top, somewhere in there in the middle, whatever. It's going to be what, what people had hoped was going to be Coach Heron's first really good year at SIU. And, and man, I'll tell you what, it's why you play the game because uh, the, the season played out. The conference tournament was at Wichita. It was a foregone conclusion. They were going to the tournament. They were getting a high seed, and they were going to do some damage in that tournament, except they got beat in the first round of the tournament at home. And uh, then there was talk about, oh, we're not going to go to the NIT. So that was my first introduction, really, in addition to going to Wichita and playing during the season. But the league was outstanding then. There's just no two ways around it, with Tulsa being a – uh, a, a big part of that road swing, and that's back when you did road swing. So uh, flew that commercial a lot of times. Coach, you know, of course, disappointment on Tuesday night, not being able to beat Austin P. and the way the game went down, there was no question, frustrations all across the board. But when you have a result like that happen, what's most important right now when you're on that coaching staff and trying to get back to work and trying to get back to playing to the, the, the capable of basketball that you know you're capable of playing? One thing that's happened in the 38 years I coached and Coach Aaron, Ron Smith, were the first ones to really indoctrinate me to this concept that's 100% true then and now. Nothing's ever as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. So you watch the film, you'll see, hey, there were some better things than what my gut said when I couldn't sleep that night. So you watch the film, you learn from it, you put it away. On the flip side, you look at Oklahoma State game or a game like St. Louis U, you watch the film and you realize, oh, we weren't quite as good as I left the you know Banterra Center thinking we were. It's never as good, never as bad. You watch the film, it's sports, and then you move on. And Coach Watson, it really changes by the minute in terms of what could be expected with the two-time transfer. We saw it with... Noah Finsky, unfortunately, in football this year for SIU. Now there's a lot of court rulings. There's a lot of legislation. There's a lot of wondering exactly what happens if you play in this 14-day window. But one thing's for sure, it leaves the door of opportunity for the potential of seeing somebody like Jarrett Hensley play on Saturday and moving forward in this window for SIU. What does that mean for SIU? What will SIU be getting with the potential of Jarrett Hensley playing in this window? Well, Jared Hensley gives him the fourth big guy. And we talked about how important the big guys are in all three aspects, certainly in their scoring. They've got to be somewhere between 23 and 28 as a unit. Uh, that gives them one more guy to get in that group. and also eats up some minutes because it's not like Coach is going to play three big guys together. He rarely plays two big guys together. Uh, but the other part is defensively, it gives them some more length, a guy that's a little bit more versatile and how Coach Mullins and their team likes to play. But the third factor that's really uh, really key, that's something I haven't seen a few times I've watched in practice, and we won't know until – there's a there's a couple of games to to go on. How does Jared Hensley rebound? How does he block out? How does he clear space? How does he create opportunities of getting it getting position to go use his length and get rebounds? Can he get a loose ball? Will he get on the floor? Those are things you don't know. If he does those things, he's a big help. What stands out about the Shockers in your eyes? Kenny Potu. He's, he's the 6'10 guy that anchors the middle and makes everybody else good. And no doubt about it, there are going to be a couple of good players by the name of Xavier in the uh, Charles Koch Center on Saturday. And excited about seeing that. Um, certainly, Colby Rogers, uh, their transfer guy from Missouri, we'll see how that helps or doesn't help them. It, it helps their rhythm, dis disrupts them, maybe the same as Jarrett. But, uh, yeah, the big guy in the middle, I think, is really thing. I think that's always been the big factor with, with Southern this year. When you think about James Madison and, and the different games that they played. So Botu's a guy that leads him in rebounding. You know, second rebounding is, is Dolan original from a Missouri state. He's their second leading rebounder at six, five. He's mainly their a three point shooter, but he's getting a bunch of boards. Biggest keys of the game from a Saluki perspective that have to go well to give Southern a chance. Well, 69 points is a number that Wichita uh, has in their in two of their losses they were 69 and I think 66. So Southern's got to find a way somehow to keep them under 70. 
Southern's been good about scoring the basketball. They can get those three groups of guys can score, you know, the bigs, the veteran guards, the young guards, they've got to score 70 and more. Uh, they cannot be intimidated about what they're going into. They've got to relish it, love it. They've got to have an absolute, uh, they've got to have a tough minded us against the world mindset but man, we just covered it a second ago. They have got to rebound and get every single loose ball because that's how you beat the Shockers. Tip-off will be at 6 o'clock Central Time on Saturday night. Our pregame show will begin at 5. For the coach, Rodney Watson, I am Luke Martin. We will talk to you tomorrow night from Wichita. Go dogs.